eye upon it. Keep our eye upon a vision of hope. Nancy said this morning, it's like a, like a ballerina who's whirling around and twirling but keeps an eye spotted on one spot to maintain the balance. In the midst of the world and the struggle of the world, keeping an eye on a vision of hope, that's what John was seeking to do when he wrote this revelation. The beauty can indeed emerge. Dr. DeYoung, don't know whether you've gone into that back room. It's my favorite room in the, in the museum. I'll tell you what that is. That's kind of a, it's a sculpture. It's built so that that's a, almost a cube, perfectly sort of four square. It is built from the charred remains of one of those burnt churches. I sat one day for 20 minutes and just stared at that. It's like it, it's like it lifts and hovers above the floor. The more I looked at it, the more beautiful it seemed to me. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Can beauty emerge? Can beauty emerge from the charred remains? When I look at that, I know it can. When I look at history, I know it can for the people that read the revelation of John first. They saw the destruction of Caesar for all despots are ultimately torn down and ripped apart by the creative power of God. They saw it. And even in the midst of the dark ages, what came out of that was a mystical movement that lights up this church today. We move to the Reformation, to the to the corruption of the Roman Catholic Church and what comes out of that and the innovation of a printing press, but that individuals are able to grapple with their own faith and dig home and grab hold of the scriptures themselves to build that faith. I can see it. I can see the beauty emerging from the difficulty. It emerged in South America when the peasants took hold of the scriptures and found out they were written for them, a story of liberation, a story of hope. I can see it. I can see that out of the midst of suffering and the charred remains of what happens, beauty emerges because that is the nature of the power of God. But more importantly, I see it in you. I've been here three and a half years and by now I know quite a few stories. I know quite a few stories, and I know that people have moved in this congregation from a place where they felt like they were the charred remains on the ground, and instead something beautiful emerged. It emerged. But I don't only see it in the individuals that are sitting here. I see it in the whole church. You're amazing. Tuesday night, we had a capital campaign consultant come and visit with us. He was, he was a nice guy. He was a lot of fun. First thing he asked uh, me and Brenda when we went out to dinner with him, so what happened in 2005? He'd seen the statistics. He knew when it dropped off. This church went through a horrible moment, and some of you have told me what it was like to walk down the halls of this place and have friends of yours turn their back on you. Well, there were charred remains. Charred remains, and we're looking for something new to grow out of it. Well, something new is growing now. We're not just poised to get something done here. We're moving right now. We went off on, a, on an effort to build a church around, around four things. And you think about the progress we've made. We talked about a spiritual path, but we've come to open that up and understand that Running into a spiritual path, that walking that path has to do with living a creative life. 
that it's what we're called to. It's what the image of God within us longs to reach out with through us. And we know there's a spiritual path. We know it's not optional. We walk it, some, some of us tiptoe, but each one of us recognizes that. Each one of us looks for the cognitive structure of our faith to make some sense. I mean, I see people struggling with that all the time. That's all the emails I get after my sermons. You know, what's going on? How do I understand that? We're seeking an intelligible faith, a structure within which we can live and grow so that we can offer it to a world who thinks that the old language, which I believe so firmly points towards something beautiful and true, but they think the old language cannot communicate the gospel in a way that we can if we find the new language to talk about old images. But we're there. And the mission heart, the mission heart in this congregation just keeps growing. I'm starting to feel sorry for Leslie Purdy, the chair of our mission committee, because people keep writing to her with a new idea. My wife did it just two nights ago. You know, but there's a sense in which we're trying to figure out, well, how do we express the love that is formed within us? But you know, more important than any of that to me, because this guy was visiting us at the session meeting on Tuesday night, we asked in our devotion time, what do you see God doing here in this church? I was floored by the answer. I, I see God stretching us, helping us to break open and get to a new place. The porridge is cooking feel a lot of hope because we're ready and we can do something here. There is a sense in which I, I, I was quite stunned by the movement of God in every leader of this church, looking out into the future and recognizing that we can move, we can make something happen. The first day I preached here, well, the second day, because I preached several years before I came. The second day I preached here, I talked about the saddest day in the life of the modern church. September 16th, 2001. It was sad because they flocked to us after 9-11, and two weeks later they were gone. We gave them nothing. We can't do it again. I have to tell you, that I think we have something to offer now. The new Jerusalem is emerging here now. It's emerging out of everyone's heart here now. It's quite beautiful, really, when you think about where we've come from. Quite beautiful to recognize the spirit working, to realize that John's vision is right. 16 chapters of horror or not, spinning and moving. Nevertheless, there is a vision of hope that there is a next, and you and I are in the business of making it happen because the spirit of the living Christ is growing out of us. The new Jerusalem's emerging here. Can you 